there are a few important concepts related to business and accounting that form the backbone of the modern accounting and financial reporting system. In this lecture, we will look at some of these concepts and how the accounting system works. Let's begin by asking the three key questions that we want to know about money in a business. The first question is how much money came into the business? Then we need to know how much money was spent in a given period and where this money was spent. Finally, we want to know how much money is left with us. As a business owner, it is important you always keep track of the flow of money in your business and keep an eye on these three questions. These are important for managing the financial health of the business and can be answered accurately only if the business has been keeping appropriate accounts. Let's look at a few examples. When you start a business, you invest money to run the business. It may be your own money that you have saved up or borrowed from friends, family or a bank. All this is money that is flowing into the business. Then you start incurring expenses to run the business. You rent a place for your office, hire employees to work and also incur a host of other expenses. All this is outflow of money. Finally, you develop your product and make your first sale. The money again starts flowing into the business. You use this money to pay your expenses, buy new computers, hire more employees and so on. Things start getting more and more complex and unless you have been keeping track of all these cash inflows and outflows, you will be lost. The job of tracking all these transactions can be made easy with the help of a suitable accounting system. An accounting system is simply a system that helps you record the business transactions that involve money. It helps you classify and allocate cash into different activities and resources. This in turn helps you answer the three questions about money and make sound decisions. A business activity such as payment to a supplier or money received for a sale will need to be recorded in the accounting system. Activities that do not involve money are not a part of the accounting system. For example, a quotation sent to a customer for a new project will not be recorded in an accounting system. The accounting systems come in many shapes and sizes. A few years back, everyone used to maintain physical accounting books occupying a whole lot of space. However, people now use a variety of accounting software for maintaining their records. If you are a small business, you can easily manage your accounts using a simple spreadsheet. However, as your business grows, the transactions become complex and you will need a robust computerized accounting system. The accounting system should be designed in such a way that it is able to provide you the information you need with minimum effort. For a manager, reporting is a very important feature. As a part of your responsibilities, you need to track your resources, control expenses, drive sales and expand your business. From time to time, you will need answers to a variety of questions. How many sales did you make the last month? Did the sales staff overshoot their travel budget? Has the company's profits grown from last year? Are there any statutory due spending? An efficient accounting system will be able to answer these questions within minutes. Otherwise, each time you want some information, you will have to tabulate and retabulate data in different formats to get the right answers. Many people get confused about the terms finance and accounting and often think that they mean the same. However, they represent two different but related functions. Within an organization, the department that handles money is called the finance department. The finance department handles two areas, finance and accounting. Finance undertakes the task of managing the company's financial resources and accounting reports the financial transactions of the firm. In smaller companies, a few people may handle both, while in a large firm, it may be headed by two different departments. 
The finance function is responsible for raising funds for the business from banks or in the form of capital from investors, managing the cash flow and all decisions related to how the money should be spent. Activities such as mergers and acquisitions and managing IPOs also fall under the purview of the finance function. The accounting department is responsible for recording all financial transactions and preparing reports that help the company, investors and government agencies understand them from a financial standpoint. These transactions are recorded and reported in a standardized format that varies from country to country. America, for instance, follows GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles. Now, International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS, is becoming popular all across the world. Since a one-rule-fits-all does not work for diverse industries, these principles help maintain recording and reporting standards, allowing room for maneuver for industry-specific details. We are going to deal with the accounting process in more detail later. However, at this stage it is important to know that all the financial transactions that a business records on a daily basis are turned into financial statements such as balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement which are used by the outside world for various purposes. These financial statements provide a snapshot view of how the business has performed during a given period. We start by recording all business transactions in a general ledger and a general journal. From the general journal and the general ledger, we prepare a trial balance which tells us if all the transactions are correctly recorded. Using the trial balance, the financial statements are prepared. These financial statements are what we present to the outside world for them to know how our business is doing. The balance sheet tells us the financial position of the company on a particular date. It provides us critical information about the value of the firm's assets, liabilities and the owner's equity. The income statement provides details of the total revenues, expenses and net profit or loss for the business in a given period of time. The cash flow statement describes the amount of cash going in and out of the business over a period of time. This document shows the movement of cash in operating, investing and financing activities. You will learn more about all these things in detail in the lectures that follow. All businesses need to report their financial performance for a particular period. This period is called the fiscal year or the financial year. While most financial statements are prepared on an annual basis, there are some statements that are also prepared monthly, quarterly or semi-annually. The fiscal year also refers to the year for income tax reporting. The fiscal period varies from country to country. While most companies consider the fiscal period of 12 months, the beginning and the ending of the fiscal period differs. The fiscal year need not be the same as the calendar year. In the US, a corporation can decide its own fiscal year. That is, they can have their fiscal year as January 1st to December 31st or February 1st to January 31st and so on. However, in most other countries there is a fixed fiscal year. For example, in Canada, India and Hong Kong, the fiscal year runs from April 1st to March 31st. In China, Mexico and Russia, the fiscal year is the same as the calendar year, that is, January 1st to December 31st. In Australia, the financial year begins on July 1st and concludes on June 30th of the following year. The first principle of modern accounting is the double entry accounting. Under this system, each transaction is entered twice, affecting two different things. For example, when you purchase a new laptop for your business, two things happen. One, a new laptop comes into the business and two, the cash is spent to buy this laptop. The accounting records should show both these effects. This method of accounting is credited to an Italian monk by the name Luca Pacioli who developed this system in 1494. 
The key advantage is that it helps you balance your books easily using debits and credits. In the next few lectures, we will cover how transactions are recorded in an accounting system. We will use a simple case study to show how the financial books of a business are prepared. The objective is to familiarize you with the accounting process without going too deep into the complexities. The going concern concept is a very important concept for financial reporting and accounting. The going concern concept assumes that the business will continue to operate for a foreseeable future. This means that the accountants can create more realistic financial statements. If the going concern concept was not there, then the accountants will have to assume that the business will not exist in the next year and they will have to close all transactions and write off all assets in the same financial year. However, this is not the case. Assume that you have purchased a machinery for your business for $10,000. If your machinery is expected to have a useful life of five years, then the accountant would write off or depreciate only one year's value, that is $2,000 this year, leaving $8,000 which will be treated as a fixed asset with future economic value for the business. If the going concern concept was not there, then the whole machinery will have to be written off in the same year as if the business will sell the machinery at the end of the year. To avoid such a situation, our accounting standards are based on the assumption that the business will continue for a long period of time and the transactions are recorded accordingly. Accounting involves recording everything in monetary value. For example, inventory will be recorded in its monetary value, not in terms of the number of units. Similarly, we will record the total expenditure on salaries not the number of employees working. All this information such as the number of employees and units of inventory are also important and are recorded in other documents. However, accounting is concerned only with the monetary value. So what value should be assigned to each item? According to our accounting standards, most items are recorded at their historical cost, that is, the cost at which they were purchased. Therefore, an asset will continue to be recorded at the cost at which it was purchased irrespective of what its current value is. For example, you purchased a building for $1 million, it will continue to be recorded at $1 million even if its market value has gone up to $10 million. Similarly, if you purchase machinery for $10,000 with a useful life of 5 years, then it will be recorded at its purchase value minus the depreciation. It may be so that a new technology has come in and this machine is totally useless and can't even be sold. Still, in the accounting records, it will have the value calculated based on purchase price and depreciation. In a simple business where all the business transactions are handled in cash, the accounting is very simple. For example, in case of a sale, goods are shipped and the cash is received on the same day. However, in real business, money doesn't often come at the same time. The cash may come before or after the transaction. For example, you may receive advance payment for the goods sold or you offer a service and receive the payment after many days. That's where things get complicated and accrual accounting is required. The accounting standards such as US GAAP and IFRS require companies to use the accrual basis of accounting. Accrual accounting requires that all revenues and expenses are recorded in the same accounting period in which they occur. This is irrespective of when the actual cash moves. An important accounting principle related to accrual accounting is revenue recognition. According to this principle, a company recognizes revenue only when it is earned, once the goods are delivered or when the service is completed. So if a retailer sells a laptop to you in June, the retailer will recognize the revenue in June itself. If you take the case of a manufacturer who receives an order in June, 
delivers the goods in July and receives the payment in August, we recognize the revenue in the month of July when the goods were delivered. The matching principle is another principle under accrual accounting. According to this principle, the expenses incurred in the business must be matched to the revenue generated. For example, the salary paid to the employees should be reported in the month in which the employees worked, not in the month in which they were paid. Similarly, the company should report any sales commissions paid in the same period in which the sale was made, not in the period in which the commissions were paid. In such a case, the sales commission will be reported as sales commission due as a liability till the commission is actually paid in the following period. There are certain cases where the matching principle does not apply. For example, in the case of advertising, it is difficult to measure the future economic benefits. Therefore, advertising expense is recognized in the period in which it is incurred. The two principles of revenue recognition and matching are at the heart of financial reporting. Both principles are designed for fair reporting of a company's revenues and income. However, it is very easy to get swayed and not follow them in your efforts to project a favorable picture of your business. By simply reporting expenses in a different period or by recognizing revenue when you have just booked an order, you can project higher income or expanding revenues. The problem is that these small steps today can lead to bigger financial scandals of tomorrow. Also, such tactics do not add any real value. Our advice is to stay away from such practices, report fairly and focus on your business.